So we've got a trailer for Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. Now, I was not a fan of Rebel Moon Part 1, and Rebel Moon Part 1 might have been the worst possible trailer they could have put out for Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. Can this trailer overcome my skepticism for the project? Let's do this. nightmare is you and I fighting together you must know you cannot win you're all here because there is nothing to return to dark days lie ahead of us all. We will teach you how to fight. That's impressive. The scar givers among them. Those this village holds most dear. I shall destroy them. no choice but to fight. This car give her herself. Go, 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 go. Are you truly prepared to allow this to continue in your name? Alrighty, real quick before I my sh I blew it up. What was I even about to say? Real quick before I share my thoughts, be sure to join me down below in the comments section. Let me know what did you think about, well, Rebel Moon Part 1, and how did that trailer affect your excitement level for Part 2? And if you like Zack Snyder movies, I have done rankings of them in the past, somewhere around here, and I'm hoping leading up to Part 2 to do some individual extended reviews of his iconic films that he's done. With that said, what did I think about this trailer for Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver? It's really tough to say because I really dug the trailers for the first movie and then the first movie itself did not deliver. So I watched the trailers for this and I was like, oh, cool. Some very cool Zack Snyder action imagery, a genre that I like. But I fell for that the first time and I don't want to fall for it the second time. Now, having seen Part 1 and seeing what this trailer is looking to deliver on a plot level, it does feel a little bit like this is actually delivering on what I wanted from the first film. So much of what was wrong with the first film is that it's it's a two-hour team-up movie that just cut, and then the credits roll. <laughs> we spent all this time introducing characters back at the farm on our quest to recruit the team. We introduce their cool thing, and then they don't do anything with any of this. It's just set up with no payoff but a final battle. Like, literally in the middle of the final battle for the first film, I was like, oh, this is the end of the movie. This is the final battle right here. This thing's about to end. And this feels like actually delivering on the setup of the first film about the side characters, about who the Scar Giver is, their backstories, their skill sets that everybody has, and actually doing the Magnificent Seven stuff, the Battle Beyond the Stars stuff, where you go back to the village, prepare them for battle, all of that fun stuff. So, I mean, it, it looks better for that reason, that it actually finishes its story, doesn't just, like, cut things off awkwardly in the middle. But with the amount of story that even appears to be in these two volumes 
that are going to be four or five hours long in this original form, it feels like pretty easy to make this a two and a half hour movie because it has been made for Seven Samurai, Magnificent Seven, Battle Beyond the Stars, and many other stories. They even did it in 40 minutes in Mandalorian Season 1, in the one where they introduced the Gina Carano character. This is a tried and true formula that doesn't require five hours. So I, I so don't want to be cynical towards this, but I, I think the first one burned so many bridges. In particular, even when we get this, this isn't the final version. This is part two of version one. <laughs> so we got to wait till like the end of the summer where they're going to put out the real version that Zack Snyder himself says, oh, it's a totally different movie. It's so wild, crazy. Like, oh, so the movie we actually want comes out later on. Is that also going to be released in two parts? Are we releasing this thing that should be one thing as four, two versions and two parts each? Like, I don't understand the strategy here. I don't understand so much of what's going on here. Very much my genre. I'm always rooting for Zack Snyder. So maybe part two can win me over by actually delivering what I thought the first movie was going to be. Filling out the lore, completing these backstories, chosen ones, whoever this Anthony Hopkins robot knight thing is. Like, maybe that'll all pay off in the second one and I'll like it a lot more. I think that is mildly on the table, but with how lackluster I found the first one and shoddy this whole concept is in its current form, I don't even know if that's on the table. So let me know what you thought down below. Check out my rankings right over there and be on the lookout for some of those reviews of Zack Snyder films. They might be over on my second channel, Sean Chandler Plus. This might be the best place for me to put them. And uh, let me know what you thought about the trailer in the comments. Keep talking movies and TV.